This trebuchet business is difficult. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're back with the trebuchet again, but it's not throwing bowling balls, or at least not just bowling balls today. We're gonna look at baskets of rocks. So the anti-personnel version of the trebuchet. Well, the thing is, we all know them for being used in sieges against uh, fortifications, battlements, and, and sending stuff into towns and that sort of thing. But we've all seen the Lord of the Rings footage with uh, the orc who steps to one side. A big rock is quite a singular device for doing a singular job. Yes, it might fragment and it might bring some masonry down, but what it doesn't do is spread carnage over a large area. Now, I learned lots of things over the years in this sort of thing. And one of the things that I know is that trebuchets throw basket of rocks. Well, do they do that? You know, do they throw baskets of rocks? I, I learned it somewhere, but I don't remember where. So if you have a source of that, let me know. But the other thing is, if they did throw the rocks, how did they throw uh, baskets? Because they're different ways of doing it. So what we're going to do today, we're going to throw a bowling ball, get the range on it. We'll put some of my men targets out there, the running knights. And then we're going to throw, well, a basket, a beautiful, bright, easy to find rocks at them. And we're going to see what happens. One bowling ball, one knight, let's! <laughs> Oh, every time I shoot this thing, the joy is the same. So the disappointment is it went, you know, five, eight meters to the left of the guy, but we're gonna move him and then we're gonna do the rocks. So here is our basket of rocks. The first time I have ever done this and I don't really know what's gonna happen. So my expectation is that they're gonna to start to tumble out as it flies through the air. And that means we're gonna get a sort of a sprinkling of rocks between here and the target hopefully most of them on target but these are much smaller than the bowling balls or, or the rocks for a real trebuchet and they're going to be more subject to wind resistance they're going to fall shorter i'm pretty sure of that now our knights actually are out at bowling ball distance so i'm thinking that they're probably going to land between here and there but i don't really know what the spread's going to be like you know what we really want is for most of them for me to be wrong obviously because i've been wrong about so many things for most of them to just carry on in a cloud coming down that's what we want but the thing that i definitely know is that that box of rocks there is looking a little precarious in my sling and this is going to be a stand well back and keep your eyes on it because i don't know what's going to happen now i've got 18 projectiles to try and follow not just one so it is a bit of a dodgy one this basket of rocks loose oh lots of interesting things happen there the first one is, I said, stand well back. Well, as you can see, one rock and part of my basket, two meters in front of me. So that's not good. But the other basket, the rest of the basket is oh, 30 meters that way, something like that. And then all the rocks just sprinkled out. So we're gonna go and walk over there. We're gonna have a look at what kind of area it covered and whether it'd be any good for anything at all. So I'm out in the field now where the box and the first few rocks fell. And, and that is 30, 40 meters from the trebuchet but then spreading out, going onward, we got about another 40 meters of spread in distance and about oh, 15, 18 meters wide. And that's in terms of hitting a target and wanting to dump your, you know, hard won energy of, of loading that trebuchet into one particular area, you're not gonna get it with this. You're just not. So the box broke apart on, uh, on launch and I guess, you know, trebuchet masters in the old days would know about that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna build it stronger. We're gonna go again and we're gonna see what kind of effect we get. But in case you're wondering, the dangerous life of a camera in Todd's world, I wasn't expecting the rocks to go so far offline. And unfortunately that one's just pointing the wrong way. Basket of rocks, take two. Oh, oh, much nicer. Right, look at this. So you've got the box out about 40, 50 meters, a really nice spread beyond that. I'm gonna refilm this and try and catch them in the air. But then look at the depth. We've got 40 odd meters front to back, maybe 15, 18 meters side to side, uh, and a long way shorter target and off target, but that's the wind. So your trebuchet master is gonna be, well, life is complicated with baskets of rocks, it appears. Let's go again and see what we can do. This is the last loose now with an open box. Loose! Oh, love it! Love it, love it, love it, love it. Now, one of the things you need to understand about me 
is I think about things endlessly, weird little things, like how do you throw a basket of rocks with a trebuchet? Now the go-to phrase, of course, is basket rocks. You think, you know, open basket, egg basket, wood basket, put some rocks in, throw it. But that has, as we've seen, thrown rocks all over the field. Really wide shot pattern, absolute rubbish. Short distance, because now they spill out way before um, getting towards target. And now, because they're lighter and smaller, they're subject to drag more, so they fall shorter. So I'm now getting like 60, 65% distance out of the trebuchet. Of course, that's absolute rubbish because you've, you know, if you're a trebuchet, master of trebuchet, you've set it up at 95% distance so you can get your rocks hit the castle, but you are as far away from them as possible. So you throw a basket of rocks, that doesn't work. You can't guarantee a, a no windy day, and it's not that windy today, but it spread the shot all over the field and quite a long way offline. Again, that's going to be a real problem. So you can get around that. And I think that this is the solution, quite simply, that we make our basket of rocks the same as our big one, our big rock. We seal it. So now we throw the basket of rocks, loose rocks still, but when it impacts, hopefully at about the same point as our bowling ball would, so you should get the distance, it now impacts onto the courtyard, onto the, the fortification, onto the tower, and now it hits, the basket breaks open, and those rocks inside are going to go everywhere. Now the thing is, this is a ploughed field. So it's not perfect for this experiment, but I think we'll get a pretty good indication of if it's going to work or not. So that's what we're going to do. But before I carry on, don't forget, support the channel, buy the t-shirts, go to the website, check it out. It's all good stuff. You'll be interested, I'm sure. Basket of Rocks version two. Here we go. Sealed basket of rocks. Oh, it's staying one piece. Perfect. Ah. Ah. This trebuchet business is difficult. Sorry, I stopped that last filming really abruptly. I'd, I'd had enough. It wasn't working out. But we're going to come to that in a minute. But right now, I'm just back on a different day, different tash, and we're going to shoot another ball again to get the trajectory, make sure everything's in the right place, and then I'm going to explain what's up. But just in case it hits, here we go. Loose. Oh, will it? Oh! Frustratingly, we missed our guy yet again, but this time by a metre, just a metre. If it had his friends, he was looking a bit lonely. If he had his friends, one of them would have had it. But the thing is, I've been thinking about the accuracy of trebuchets, and actually, I thought at the beginning, you have gravity, gravity never changes, it does the same uh, cycle, that doesn't change, everything will be the same, super precise. It's not. And it's frustrated me for film after film. And I think I've come to the conclusion that there are so many little differences, so many little variables, shot on shot, the moisture, the temperature, because that changes rope lengths and elasticity, the weight of the projectile itself, how the projectile is in the slide. All these little tiny things can compound, some on one shot, some on another, but out at the other end, you get a massive difference. So fortifications, big rocks, brilliant. Super precision, hitting something, it just doesn't do it. And you know, trebuchet owners out there, come and tell me, but I think what I was expecting from a trebuchet with accuracy is not possible. This inherent inaccuracy of the machine brings us exactly back to this whole film here, baskets of rocks. Because when you have a basket of rocks, of course, it doesn't matter where one rock goes, you've got a hundred of them. Sprinkle them over the whole area. Something will hit something. Great. Without a lid, that was my first attempt. I kind of thought it wouldn't work because it did exactly what I thought it would do. Tumbles through the air. They all fall out somewhere between here and target. Rubbish. No good at all. Next approach, find your basket of rocks, put a lid on it, hold the rocks in place. And I thought, genius idea, perfect, because the thing is you don't learn everything from history, they don't tell you what they used to do, so you have to interpret. And I think that they put a lid on their basket of rocks, if they did it at all. That holds the rocks in place, gives you a projectile that, same kind of weight as your single rock, same kind of uh, area, surface area, should go the same kind of distance. It didn't. And I think, coming back to the accuracy problems, what it is, it's just another layer of chaos because this is getting tangled in the sling. And that is the problem. And it just wasn't working. So what I've done is I've made a box of rocks with a lid, and this time it's got its own tether cord. No tangling in the sling, should be clean as you like, and we're going to test it right now. 
Basket rocks, mark three, loose. Oh, yes. That was almost really good. That's the phrase of this film. So it stayed in one piece. Now it's gone onto a soft field. That kind of doesn't matter because it would not behave like that with 50 kilos of rocks instead of six. It would not behave like that on a, a courtyard or a tower. But it stayed in one piece. That's what we want. And it didn't go as far, but it went a lot further than the earlier Mark II version. So I think we might be onto something here. I really do. I'm going to go and check it out. Well, here's our basket in one piece, which I think is a really good thing. Because the thing is, the reality of this with 10 or 15 times the weight is these shot would have spread everywhere, especially on a stone courtyard or, or on battlements. So this is a fantastic anti-personnel weapon, if you can get it to go the distance. We're 30 metres short, and strangely, we're 10 metres offline, which the earlier shots with the other boxes were doing as well. So this machine is incredibly sensitive to payload. The accuracy just changes utterly when you change what you throw from it. And that is no good for a weapon system at all. So I'm coming more and more to think that a trebuchet is a, a one thing device. It throws a big rock and it throws it really well. Don't mess about with anything else. Big rock, that's where you want to do it. So I'm going to go one more attempt now, where what I did notice is that this tether was acting a little bit like a tail. And I'm now going to put no lid on the box and see if the shot just stay in this time if it can if the tether can just orient the box enough that the rocks don't tumble out maybe they will maybe they won't so basket on a tether with no lid loose oh now we're talking oh that's the one so some spread out as it went through the air most stayed there i think about five came out the rest of them stayed in the other 10 11 they stayed in the box, they'd spray around. Let's go and have a look. Well, this is a brilliant result because all of those together, that would have landed, they would have just gone absolutely everywhere in the vicinity. But also it's dropped five or six stones in front and behind. So they've come in as a cloud, absolutely brilliant anti-personnel, superb, everything great about that. And I got there in the end, however, still short of target. So, we need to go and talk about that. I've learned so much actually in the last time I was out and then today. Basket of rocks and trebuchets. What have I learned? Well, we learned from our mistakes and I've made plenty of them. However, these things are fiendishly difficult to throw. But actually, every time I've tried to throw something that's not a bowling ball, bowling balls are hard enough, anything else, it changes all the parameters completely. So this is my one big takeaway from this today. Baskets of rocks are tricky but everything with the trebuchet is tricky. And what that means is if you try and change any one thing, the 10 different variables in the machine will all just come into play and your accuracy at the other end is rubbish. I thought when I started the trebuchet journey that it would be totally repeatable. Gravity is the same every single time. Everything will be the same. It's not, it is not the same. And that has made me really rethink something else. Wheels on a trebuchet. Because this machine is fine. It's fine if you want to shoot 140 metres at a bowling ball. What if you want to shoot 150 metres? What if you want to shoot less? What if you want to shoot to the left or the right? I assumed, I assumed that this thing would be so heavy, like the one at Warwick is 22, 25 tonnes. Really difficult to handle on wheels. But if you don't put it on wheels, you are restricting yourself so much. And as one of the commentators said, how do you build one of these things within bowshot of a castle? You are absolutely a target. Every time your skilled craftsman goes up 20 meters, wham, oh, lost another skilled craftsman. How many have you got? So I have ch completely changed my attitude on this and give me the evidence, let me know. I think they must have put them on wheels. I really do. Anyway, baskets of rocks, trebuchets, learning experiences, mistakes. See you another time.